What's up YouTube? This is Brian from Bull Strength coming at you with another video and today we're going to be taking a tour of my garage gym. In the very beginning, I started off subleasing other local gyms in the Tampa area. Long story short, a major incident with a local gym owner forced me to make a decision. Either I'm going to throw in the towel and try to slip back into my old career, or triple down and just make this work. And obviously I went with the latter option and decided to rebuild bull strength from the ground up. I would pretty much had it with subleasing other gyms and basically answering to other trainers and kind of having to work around their schedule and pretty much just creating my own thing. In the aftermath of leaving the comfortable storefront gyms that I was used to, I ended up doing roving group classes outside. We pretty much would meet in a group at a local park and we would do group classes a few times a week. Meanwhile, I had to prioritize reserving some sort of an indoor space for personal training. Thankfully, my housemate at the time had a 100 square foot den that he was not using for anything, and uh, he allowed me to convert it into a small personal training studio. I had already owned a set of kettlebells and a bunch of random dumbbells up to this point, but I needed somewhere to be able to set up shop, set up a barbell, and have sort of a squat rack situation for me to be able to actually practice strength training again. So I ended up buying a cheap barbell, a mobile squat rack, which can be seen in a few of my older videos, and I just ended up touching up on my equipment in general, slowly piecing things together and building it up over time. In this 100 square foot den is where I started making videos on the Bull Strength channel, uh, a lot of my early training footi footage was in this small personal training studio, um, and yeah, I just basically used this space for about a year or so to train myself and other people. In April 2018, I moved into a home and I converted the 300 square foot garage that we had into a full-fledged personal training and group class studio. Now I realized very early on as the group classes started to get popular that there wasn't enough room for me to regularly host these group classes. So eventually this forced me to shift my focus entirely into one-on-one -on -one personal training, which is kind of what I prefer anyway, since I'm kind of more of an introverted guy in general. Now I had some pretty good gear from the 100 square foot studio, but I still had a lot of work to do. Now starting out, I was pretty much good with kettlebells. I had acquired a set of them earlier on, um, so there was really no need to do any sort of upgrading. Uh, although in the future I do want to get something heavier than 32 kilograms. As far as my dumbbell inventory, I had a small set of dumbbells going up to 10 pounds. And basically I ended up buying pairs of dumbbells going up to 40 pounds in 5 pound increments. And then I eventually ended up picking up some lighter weights and intermediate weights for newer trainees and for doing prehab movements. So like the pair of 3's that I have, 8's and 12s are good intermediate weights for people you know, trying to make progress between the 10 pound dumbbells and the 15s. I wanted to go all the way up to at least 40s so that I'd be able to comfortably hit some sets of curls and flies with that weight. Though I do plan to keep buying more pairs of weights in the future, but for now I have a pair of adjustable dumbbells uh, for loading heavy weight. Uh, but the awkwardness of using adjustable dumbbells kind of limits the exercise variety a little bit. Uh, there's a couple videos on my Instagram where I can be seen doing rows, and that's pretty much all I use these adjustable dumbbells for, is for loading up heavier weights for single arm rows. One of the first things I did when I moved into this garage is I picked up a new barbell. Um, this is a just a standard Olympic barbell. I picked it up at Play It Again Sports for only 75 bucks. Although I'm sure with the increased demand for barbells, that price is probably much higher now. The next major piece of equipment I picked up was a trap bar. This is the famous trap bar uh, from the trap bar videos on my channel that have become pretty popular. Trap bar deadlift is, is a bad idea. Then later I ended up picking up a Titan Ohio deadlift bar for about $400. Uh, just something that would have a little give on it so that I'd be able to properly do deadlifts with the correct barbell. And then I also have this kind of throwaway barbell. Um, it was donated to me very early on and I ended up breaking the collar on it from doing rack pulls. So I pretty much have it on standby as an alternative for doing T-bar rows and stuff like that. 
uh, if all the other equipment in the gym is taken. Another very important item that I had to upgrade pretty quickly was the amount of plates that I had. So I started off with just four 45 pound plates, as well as various pairs of 35s and everything going down to two and a half pound plates. I ended up picking up another eight 45 pound plates uh, so I could do heavier deadlifts, kind of load up the trap bar a little more, uh, you know, be able to overload with rack pulls and stuff like that. I just needed enough weight to be able to continue progression. And at this point, I still could use some more, but I'm happy with where I'm at for right now. All right, now let's talk about bumpers. So I don't really have a lot in the way of bumper plates. Um, and actually, these 10-pound bumpers that I have here were the first piece of gym equipment that I bought. Uh, this was the first personal training studio that I was training out of. Um, I pretty much wanted a pair of bumper plates because the trainer there didn't have any uh, and I wanted to have a pair of 10s to be able to teach proper deadlift form to newer trainees. And more recently I picked up this pair of 25s uh, for the higher durability. I'm not much of an Olympic lifting guy, uh, but they are great for the log clean and press. And I just generally like them more because they're a lot less flimsy than the 10s. All right, another very important thing that I did early on was tiling the gym. So these are just some foam tiles that I picked up from Dick's Sporting Goods. I don't remember exactly how much it was to do the entire 300 square foot gym, uh, but it, if I had to guess, it was somewhere between three and four hundred dollars for all of these tiles. Now you can see, um, you know, it's been a couple years of me lifting in here. Uh, there is a lot of distortion with the padding, a lot of rips and tears and divots in places where I have obviously done more heavier deadlifts. But overall, these gym tiles have served me very well, and I would highly recommend them for a starter gym. And here are my resistance bands. I pretty much only use these for stretching. Um, I used to use them for more west side style training uh, using accommodating resistance. Uh, but the bands ended up fraying and tearing, and I was kind of tired of replacing them incrementally. Uh, so now they're pretty much only used for dynamic stretching, as well as mimicking cable movements. So I'll use it for isolation movements like pal-off presses or tricep pushdowns, for example. All right, the TRX straps. Um, these are literally just decoration. I've never really used these. Uh, they were given to me by another trainer, and I've never actually hooked them up. So. These are some nice little wall decorations, I guess. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the Strongman specific gear. So this is a 51 pound Titan log. Uh, it cost me about $200. It's not the best log on the planet. There are parts of the log where the paint is stripping off and the metal underneath is starting to rust. But I do try to keep up with the maintenance. I try to keep the chalk off of it and keep it oiled. But this is a lower quality log. So I'm kind of getting what I paid for. And then really the only other piece of Strongman specific equipment I have is this top loaded sled for push pull type exercises. Another very important purchase that I got is this plyo box. Now, this is a foam plyo box. It's not wooden, it's not super durable, uh, but there are a few advantages to using it. Like if you miss a jump, you're not gonna completely scrape the skin off your shins. Uh, but this is mostly used for teaching squats. Um, so with my new trainees, I typically make them start off doing box squats. And then if they desire to do something more advanced, we'll move on to that. But most of my trainees only do box squats for back squats. Um, unless they are a more competitive client. Now, as a lot of you guys know, I live in Florida, so these sort of industrial fans are absolutely essential all year round. Um, and then for the hotter months, I'll bust out this second fan that has a little more power to it. And what would a personal training studio be without a mirror, without some way to admire the gains? Uh, now this is a very, very small mirror that I have sort of taped uh, up to this window frame, but it gets the job done. I mean, you know, if you're trying to do curls and you want to admire the gains, maybe check out the veins popping. Um, this, th it gets the job done. You know, my the entire gym isn't wrapped in a mirror like I would prefer, uh, but you know, got to work with what I got. And moving on, we have some crash pads over here. These are mostly just for dropping the log when I'm doing log clean and press and pretty much haven't really served me any other function aside from that. All right, now let's talk about the most essential piece of equipment in any strength gym, and that is the power rack. The power rack is essential because it allows you to do safer squats, safer bench press. Uh, you're able to rack the overhead press. 
and it allows me to be able to do partial exercises like pin presses and rack pulls. Now this is a shorter squat rack. I actually had to shop around for this one, uh, but the, my, the, the height of my gym isn't more than eight feet. Um, and most of the power racks are about eight feet or more tall. So I had to find something a little bit shorter. Now I picked this power rack up from a warehouse, um, kind of on the south side of Tampa. If you're familiar with the area, it's around the Brandon area. But basically I picked this power rack up for $225. They marketed it as a $300 squat rack, but after doing a Google search and showing them how much I could get it for on Google, they lowered the price for me. All right, moving on. Uh, over here we have a 10 pound steel mace, which I got a hell of a deal on. Uh, I only spent like $10 on it, which is ridiculously cheap for a steel mace. Um, and then I also have this Indian club, which is more for like rehab and prehab type shoulder movements. I pretty much only use the mace and club for dynamic stretching and warming up. All right, now let's take a look at some of the miscellaneous uh, gear that I have. Obviously starting off, I have a few different foam rollers, which are used for fascia release. A couple of hand grippers, um, you know, for grip training. I don't really use these a whole lot. I'll use them every once in a while, you know, like I'll, I'll superset it with something else, but typically I don't really use these hand grippers very much. And then of course we have a healthy stock of chalk, uh, which is gonna be essential for doing deadlifts, uh, especially if you're doing anything with a raw grip. And then I have a can of WD-40, brush, and some Allen wrenches. And this is pretty much my uh, barbell and just general equipment maintenance kit. And then over here I have a couple of fat grips uh, for adding width to the barbell if I'm doing grip training. And then I have a single extreme fat grip which adds an extra two inches to the bar width. I have some cones for setting up stations. I've got a pretty decent amount of sparring gear. I've got a few pairs of gloves, some mitts, uh, and I do have a heavy bag. I also have a set of mini bands, which I pretty much only use as teaching tools, uh, but I also use them for abduction style exercises like monster walks and fire hydrants. Uh, over here, I have a yoga block that I've never used. I don't even know where it came from or why it's here. And we come down a shelf. This is the meat and potatoes of my fascia release gear. So I've got a few different types of rollers, a wad ball, and uh, all this stuff goes very nicely. Uh, if I can't hit something deep enough with the foam roller, I'll uh, grab something from this shelf and dig into whatever I'm trying to hit. All right, we're coming down to the next shelf. I have a pair of two and a half pound ankle weights, uh, which I mostly only use for reverse crunches and flutter kicks every once in a while. Uh, but generally I don't really use the ankle, ankle weights very much. The ab wheel, which I do use fairly often. I'm a big fan of the ab wheel. And then also I have a few weightlifting belts. So the smaller, cleaner one is Rachel's powerlifting belt. And this dirty one that's kind of caked in sweat and has blood stains in it. Um, yeah, that's, that's my belt. I should probably replace that soon. And moving on, we also have an agility ladder for agility drills, a few different slam balls for some cardio type stuff. Um, I have these pair of Nike Romaleos um, that I pretty much bought back in like 2013 or 2014 when all the power lifters were basically recommending that you either buy Addy Powers or Romaleos. I ended up buying into the meme, ended up buying the shoes, and they actually did help me for a while. Um, I did not have very good ankle mobility when I first started squatting. And the Nike Romaleos were a very good band-aid for that. Since you have the heel of your foot supported, it allows you to be able to squat deeper uh, with more poor ankle mobility. So basically Nike Romaleos and Addy Powers are band-aids if you have poor mobility. Or, I mean, I, I guess you should be wearing them if you're a serious Olympic lifter. Uh, but, you know, Olympic lifting isn't really my forte. So in other words, these Nike Romaleos are basically just sitting around collecting dust. Uh, then I also have this box of random types of gloves, compression gear, I've got elbow and knee sleeves, lifting straps and all kinds of just smaller miscellaneous equipment like that. Uh, and then over here, this is my collection of workout logs that go all the way back to 2012. I've said it at least a dozen times on this channel and I will say it a 13th time. Remember to log everything it is key to making progress 
All right, so that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or Subscribestar. Links are down below in the description, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.